will not cause pain. It will cause other symptoms, but will not cause pain. Pain results from these extracranial and intracranial structures. Uh, how does how do these structures cause pain? So extracranial arteries, when they are distended, they are under traction or they are dilated. Dilatation is one of the mechanism of the of, uh, mechanism of migraines. Then displacement of large intracranial veins or their dural coverings. Uh, we talked about what intracranial structures can cause. These are blood. So here we are talking about how are they causing pain? They are causing by these mechanisms, then compression, traction, or inflammation of cranial or spinal nerves, then spasm, inflammation, or trauma to cranial or cervical muscles. And uh, last but not least, very important, meningeal irritation and raised intracranial pressure can lead to headache. So all these are mechanisms of headache, how headache is produced, uh, not uh, surprisingly, not by any uh, involvement of the brain, but of the structures around the brain. So how do you approach, uh, you know, a headache is one of the commonest symptoms that uh, presents to neurology OPD. And what do you think, what is the most uh, common symptoms, the most common symptom that is uh, that with which any patient present to any hospital? What the commonest, commonest symptom is pain. And among pain, headache is the commonest symptom that with, with, each, uh, with which a patient presents to your clinics. So uh, how do we approach? Uh, we always, like, like in a previous lecture, we talked about that epilepsy is mostly clinical, although in certain cases, we usually do not rely only on history in case of headache, but majority of the diagnosis, most of the diagnosis is made on history. So how do you take history when you are seeing a patient with the headache? You start with onset. If it is acute onset, new, for example, new onset headache, or a headache which is started in teens. For example, a patient is presenting to you, the doctor, this pain started when I was a teenager. So what do you think? The natural, natural history of migraine is it starts in childhood. Natural history of tension type headache is usually they start in later adult life. So uh, onset and duration. And then there are certain uh, other features that uh, are related to the onset, which we have been talking about, frequency and temporal pattern. Your, your diagnostic criteria of all the headaches depend on frequency of the headache and severity, quality, site, and spread of headache. Uh, migraines are very severe headache, whereas tension type headache, they are not very severe. A person with migraine is not usually able to continue doing his activity, and a pe person with tension type of headache is usually able to continue his routine activities. What are associated features? You must have heard that with migraine, there is photophobia, Photophobia. Uh, photophobia means a person does not feel does not feel good in light and prefers to stay in dark. Uh, there is associated vomiting, and there may be associated. Uh, uh, I mean, inability to perform routine activity. So all these features they are associated features. So what associated features are always present when we are seeing a patient with headache? Then what are aggravating and relieving factors? Lack of sleep, certain food, certain seasonal changes associated with fever, headaches, or other things, what, and the, all these things, they aggravate. Uh, and what, uh, what are relieving factors? Uh, like, for example, like does the headache respond to painkillers or it does not? The, or uh, does it improve on sleeping or not? Does it improve on taking that cup of tea or not? So this degree of disability during headache indicates that the headache is severe or moderate or 
uh, mild. Just like I said, uh, on the severity is usually assessed by your ability to continue activity during headache. Then effect of headache on routine life, uh, how does it impair your quality of life? Most of the severe headaches like migraine or cluster headaches, they impair quality of life and usually they warrant the use of preventive treatment. So if it affects the quality of your life, if it is uh, uh, causing you to suffer or you to miss your days of work or your study, then it is affecting your quality of life. Type and manner of using painkiller. Do you know there is a headache which is called analgesic overuse headache. Previously, it was called rebound headache. It has been changed to analgesic or substance abuse headache or analgesic overuse headache. So, uh, patients who have primary headache syndromes and they use even they use uh, painkillers daily, even for the for the uh, for example knee pain or back backache or neck pain, even for those, those who are routinely using these painkillers, this also lead to uh, uh, analgesic rebound headache or analgesic overuse headache. Then change in characteristic of headache. We will be causing, we will be talking about this factor a lot, uh, in, in our next slides that this is one of the, uh, one of the uh, sinister type of headaches that when the headache changes its character. Then family history or re of recurrent or persistent headaches. Uh, he means uh, uh, patients who have migraine, they usually have, may have a positive family history of migraine. Or if there's depression or psychiatric illness associated headache, then, then you also may get uh, uh, family history positive with, for these patients. So how do you approach? You examine after journal physical examination. You look uh, you for uh, you also during journal physical examination. You also look for vital sign. Uh, we know that hypertension is associated with the headache, but is among the causes. It is quite a lower cause in the in the diagnosis of headache. It is not the permanent cause of headache, but however. We do use, we do see vital signs. Sometimes pain itself may cause uh, an elevation of blood pressure, for which gives a false impression that uh, headache may, that the headache is being caused by the hypertension. And usually person does not seek treatment for other causes, considering that this was, this is associated with hypertension. So patients, if you find blood pressure elevated, you must also see that patient between the headache you must examine for uh, hypertension also. Then palpation of the head and face, systemic examination is indicated as indicated by history or symptoms. The most, uh, other clinical examination is other neurological examination is routine examination. You have to look for mental status, consciousness, pupillary responses, sensation and all of those signs but the most and foremost exam examination that is, that is required for the headache and without which you cannot diagnose headache is fundoscopy you have to look at the optic disc whether it is swollen or not if it is swollen it is a sign of raised intracranial pressure and you cannot disregard that this headache as routine headache and you have to uh, in, investigate the patient immediately and should consider this at, as an emergency. So the most important clinical sign that, that should be looked for is swelling of optic disc or we must say that fundoscopy is mandatory for the diagnosis of headache and it should not be raised when we are examining a patient with, uh, with, with headache. So uh, what are headache alerts? When do you when you are required to definitely investigate the patient? For example, a patient comes to you with first or worst severe headache. Usually, we all know that this is a sign of this is this is a, this may be a sign of uh, uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Although 
it is not always subarachnoid hemorrhage, but subarachnoid hemorrhage is a life-threatening condition and should not be missed. First attack of migraine may also present as severe headache. It may also present as first severe headache. First attack of cluster headache may also present as first severe headache. But since these are not life-threatening headaches, the first and worst headache should always be investigated and we will later see that first headache at the first headache we cannot diagnose migraine so it should always be investigated with the headache you are also finding neurological signs or symptoms for example uh, with the headache you are find, finding uh, any uh, change in vision or uh, double vision or if weakness of one part of the body or irritability or mood disturbances, which are features of uh, uh, meningitis, then you must. Then papillom edema, we have already talked about it, uh, that fundoscopy is very important. And when you when you look at fundus and you find papillom edema, then you, for, you, also, uh, born, you also are supposed to investigate the patient. Then if headache occur in close, uh, uh, approximation with fever, seizure, confusion, or loss of consciousness. If these symptoms are associated with sudden onset of headache, then uh, we must investigate. If vomiting precedes headache, usually what happens that in case of migraine or those headaches which are associated with vomiting, severe pain syndrome which are associated, pain vomiting occur at the height of the headache. If vomiting starts earlier than headache, first vomiting occurs and then headache starts, then usually you consider raised intracranial pressure and you have to investigate the uh, investigate that patient. Then new onset headache with an underlying medical condition. Uh, for example, a patient, any medical condition, for example, if your patient has, uh, say, tuberculosis and he, the, he or she is on, on treatment for tuberculosis, and if it, he's, he or she starts a new patient, starts having new onset headache. If your patient is in own case of migraine, but then starts another type of headache with different characteristics, with different features which were not previously part of his or a syndrome, then we must also consider that this is new onset headache with any underlying oh, okay. medical condition. Then new onset headache after the age of 50 years. If headache disturbs sleep or it presents immediately upon awakening, these are again signs of raised intracranial pressure. If headache is induced by bending forward, lifting weight, or cough, then again this indicates raised intracranial pressure. Although this may also occur with a very common clinical condition that is acute sinusitis, acute paranasal sinusitis, then it is caused by then it may be caused by uh, cough. Then headache subsequent to head trauma is also uh, should also be investigated. So you have to what you have to remember is as new doctors when you should be very alert to the first severe headache, neurological sign and symptoms with headache, fundus fundoscopy showing papilledema, seizure fever vomiting proceeds, then new onset of headache with underlying medical condition after age of 50 years, disturbed sleep, induced by bending forward, coughing, or headache subsequent to trauma. So uh, these are the conditions which you must always look for when you are taking a history and you must specifically ask for these all these signs. If they are absent, then your patient perhaps has benign headache, and otherwise, patient is some other, some type of symptomatic headache. So, how do we classify headaches? Primary headaches usually have no cause. No cause for pain is known, not not to the not to the humans to to date. Secondary headache they occur in close temporal association with an attributed to another disorder that is known cause of headache. OEB may be anything which occur, uh, for example, uh, if a patient has acute sinusitis, for example, if you know that uh, a patient has some had a stroke or patient has is a known case of hypertension or any other condition which 
occurs or if the patient has recently been diagnosed as a case of intracranial space occupying lesion then which is commonly known as tumor so if you know that all these conditions then we call that if we know the we, if we know that there is some condition which is a known cause of headache disorder then we call that condition that we call that headache secondary headache uh, cranial neuralgias is third variety of headache that's why initially we said in our, in our definition that it should not be restricted to uh, and one common it should not be restricted to the uh, distribution of a nerve uh, and one common cranial neuralgia that is that you know very well is trigeminal neuralgia so that must because it also occurs in in the portion in all the in the region of the head and neck head and neck then we call it cranial neuralgia we call it trigeminal neuralgia and we do not call it headache because it is specifically occurring within the distribution of trigeminal one or more distribution more or more the uh, middle or branches of trigeminal nerve then there are certain non classifiable headaches also uh, you can find this classification in detail at uh, international headache society website uh, ihs you were if, even you, if you write just uh, the query on google uh, international headache society uh, criteria for the diagnosis of headache you can be directly led to the uh, to that website so talking about primary headaches we talked about primary headache primary headaches which have no cause which are with, with the, where the cause is not known uh, there are three types uh, three common types of headache migraine with or without aura tension type headache and cluster type cluster headache less common type headaches are peripheral hemicrania idiopathic stabbing uh, tram headache cold stimulus headache cold stimulus headache i i think many of you must have also have experienced remember uh, experiencing headache as soon as you take a bite first bite of ice cream so this is cold stimulus headache when the uh, when the cold stimulus touch your palate you have suddenly feeling of pain in your head many people feel this this is benign of type of headache and may be experienced usually this not require treatment and experienced by many then benign cough headache uh benign exertional headache some people they they develop headache which uh, uh, after exertion and then it uh, subsides when they take rest then headache associated with sexual activity again uh, subsides with rest and does not require treatment so all these are less common type of primary headaches but uh, they should be mentioned because most of them except for paroxysmal hem hemicrania if it becomes very frequent they usually they do not require treatment but they are primary type of treatment so we will we will talk about and secondary head type of headache syndromes are are due to headache trauma head trauma vascular disorder non vascular intracranial disorder substance abuse or withdrawal substance use is includes which uh, analgesic overuse headaches which we were talking in the beginning of the lecture then uh, non cephalic infections metabolic disorders disorders of cranium neck eyes ear nose sinuses and all these disorders uh, so we will be talking about migraine first migraine is commonest paroxysmal disorder and uh, prevalence of migraine is is in is quite consistent ranging from 8.4 to 12.7 female are more three times more affected than male this is classification of migraine you do not have to remember this classification you do this is this can be uh, consulted time and uh, sometimes sometimes when required but usually you do not have to remember this classification this is written and you can have a uh, they have the pdf document downloaded from if you are interested but you don't have however you have to remember certain diagnostic points in the in the criteria for the diagnosis to diagnose this headache disorder these dis headache disorders 
So uh, I will explain one uh, criteria and then you can read all the other criteria. So at least five attacks fulfilling criteria B to D. So five attacks, migraine without aura. Uh, five attacks when the patient present, we were talking about first severe headache. Why we cannot call it migraine? Because we require at least five attacks to diagnose migraine. So first severe headache is not diagnosed as migraine, even if it is migraine. So we do not diagnose it as migraine. So uh, at least when the patient first comes to you, he must or he or she must have experienced at least five attacks. Then headache attack lasting four to four to seventy two hours, untreated or unsuccessfully treated. Usually, it does not last more than seventy two hours and does not last less than four hours. So headache lasting four to 72 hours. Then headache has at least two of the four characteristics. It is unilateral, it, it may be pulsating, it may be moderate or severe intensity, and aggravation or by or causing avoidance of routine activity. It, it, aggravation by continuing physical activity or Improvement by avoiding routine activity are both diagnostic criteria. Are both in the diagnostic criteria. So this uh, this is one of the uh, feature which is clustered as C. Then during headache, at least one of the following symptoms: nausea and or or vomiting. Both may be present, or any one of these may be present. Then photophobia and or uh, photophobia and phonophobia for migraine. Both of these may be present, and there's third one also, which is experienced by many people, but not included. I don't know for what reason in the criteria is osmophobia. Osmophotophobia is is a, a irritability or increasing headache with lights. Phonophobia is uh, increase in headache with the uh, sounds, and osmophobia is increase in headache by um, smells. So uh, all these criteria, five attacks, fulfilling these criteria uh, should be present when you diagnose a patient with a, a migraine without, without aura. And will have it. Or if the patient presents with pa patient with the tumor presents to you with unilateral headache, may have pulsating headache because of raised ICP, may have uh, prolonged headaches lasting two to three days, but then you do not call there. It is it cannot be attributed to any other disorder. So uh, the, the 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 it cannot be attributed. And if, for example, a patient has some neurological disorder, for example, a patient has essential tremors. Essential tremors and familial tremors, your patient may have essential tremors, but you do not attribute headache to it. If patient has some neurological symptoms, but you cannot attribute headache to that symptom. Or if or and his imaging should be normal. Imaging, uh, if abnormal, for example, a patient may have congenital malformation, for example, arachnoid cyst may be present in the in the uh, on MRI, but that is usually the not the cause for headache. So, not attributed to another disorder. If that disorder, any neurological symptom is present, should not be a cause of headache. If MRI or imaging is abnormal, should not be a cause for headache. So, it should not be. It cannot. You cannot attribute headache to another disorder, and you uh, then you call it migraine without aura. So, for that reason, migraine. We often call migraine as a diagnosis of exclusion, which means after we have excluded all other causes of headache, we call it either on history or on examination or on investigation, we call we then label this as migraine. Then uh, typical aura with migraine headache. Again, aura uh, symptoms, we will be talking about it uh, in a brief time. At least for, for migraine with aura, because these are 
uh, attacks with some focal neurological symptoms, uh, two attacks are enough to diagnose. Without migraine, without aura, five attacks. With aura, two attacks. So uh, aura should be fully reversible. Without visual, should be fully reversible. Differentiate fully reversible means there should not be remain, should not be persistent neurological disorder after uh, after headache subsides. So this differentiate it from stroke or other neurological uh, syndromes. So aura should be fully, fully reversible. And uh, aura should not last, should not, should last more than five minutes and should last less than 60 minutes. So all this is written, I was just explaining it and this, this is available in all the books and on in many websites. So you can read it, but I was expl explaining it to you why they are important. Reversibility is important so that you, not, you do not attribute to another headache disorder. And also uh, uh, that duration of aura is important. So how does a syndrome, how does a clinical migraine start? Prodrome is, uh, is, is early warning of migraine, not aura. It, is, uh, it may proceed by hours or days few days, I mean two to three days, patient experiences change in mood or behavior, becomes irritable, and may have, uh, may have uh, autonomic like palpitation, may have sweating, may have slightly elevated blood pressure. So all these features may appear one to two, three days before the, uh, if it occurs in isolation or if it is mild, usually we, it is not noticeable. Then aura, what is aura? Complex of neurological symptoms that precede or accompany the headache or occur in isolation. It can be visual, sensory, motor, any combination of. So visual aura uh, may be, uh, we, uh, I'm showing you a few examples of it. Uh, then sensory aura is paresthesia. Visual aura is commonest aura that is experienced by the patients with uh, migraine with aura which is called uh, classical migraine, and this is known as common migraine. Migraine without aura is common, and this is known as classical migraine. So uh, aura symptom, the commonest aura symptoms that is experienced by the patients is visual. Mostly one patient may have one type of aura, aura only, may not have, usually do not have multiple types of aura. For example, a person with visual aura usually does not have sensory or motor or any other uh, type of auras. Or so, uh, so vi visual uh, usually the aur auras are stereotypic and always remain same for most of their for most of the headaches. A person may have both type of headaches. Some attacks may be without aura, aura and some attacks without. Uh, aura may have both type of headaches, combination of these two headaches. But if the auras are present, they are always of the same type. Uh, commonest aura, commonest, we, we talked about aura among visual, sensory, motor, any, com any combination of these. There may be gustatory aura also, like we talked about in epilepsy. Gustatory is, they have a feeling of certain taste in their mouth before the onset of headache or it may be auditory, feel hearing of certain sounds, genitals, anything in ear uh, before uh, that, or it may, it may be paresthesias, it may be slight motor paresis or complete motor paresis, uh, uh, weakness of one part of the body or the other part of the body associated with it. And this is, I think, uh, this is rarest type of uh, aura. This is commonest aura and this is rarest aura. So uh, most, among the visual aura, the most characteristic visual auras are scintillating scotomans. Then next common is paresthesia and they are also usually in oral uh, feet, uh, region. Then heavy loss of limbs, this is motor type of our aura and speech and language disturbances, difficulty in finding words, Vertigo, diplopia are also rare. 
then a scintillating, this is scintillating scotomas. This is scintillating because they have this type of balls and it is starts like this as a small dot. Gradually these zigzag balls, they increase in size, they increase in size, they increase in size and the central area is, it is called a scotoma because the central area is blind. Patient is not able to see in this part. He, he or she patient is able to see in this part, but not in this part of that. So there is a fortification. These are the lines which can be seen here. And this is how it gradually subsides. The wall, wall breaks, then shortens, and then it disappears. So this is how it starts. Gradually increase in size. Area of blindness in the center part of the or, uh, scotoma increases and then it subsides. Uh, then uh, after aura, uh, the attack. Uh, this is, sorry, this is another type of uh, fortification spectra. You call it fortification because they have wall like uh, this. Again, this, is, uh, this area is blind and this is seen among, on the uh, vision of the patient. Uh, then diplopia is also then migrainous white out, migrainous white out, migrainous. You have often heard or experienced blackouts when you are dehydrated, when you are sitting very, for very long in hot weather. You may have blackouts, presentable type of feelings, but in migraine usually blackout is not the feature. Um, I remember reading an Oxford textbook. To, of uh, medicine that migraine uh, blackout if it precedes headache it usually excludes the diagnosis of headache however nothing is hard and fast in uh, medicine so we see, we usually say that blackout is not the feature white out is the feature this is how the patient sees white out uh, in aura then the attack itself it usually it usually gradual in onset and peaks within two hours. Commonly throbbing or pulsatile. It starts mostly, mostly in morning, usually unilateral and localized in any part of the varia, commonly frontotemporal, but usually it starts in, uh, the commonest start is in frontotemporal and ocular area, ocular villi. And gradually, it may become diffuse, it may become bilateral, or it may remain restricted to one side of the body. Uh, it is usually accompanied by heightened senses. Heightened senses, for example, Kyogi, we have already talked about photophobia and phonophobia. Light doesn't feel good by the patient, and sounds do not are not uh, usually irritate our patient when he is so. Heightened and smells, they also, patient is not able to bear smells also. So, heightened special senses. They are GI symptoms in present in 90% cases. If not vomiting, anorexia. If not vomiting, reduced gut motility. So, uh, usually, GI symptoms are the commonest symptoms beside central nervous symptoms, which are present in the patient with. So they are the commonest symptoms. Then it may worsen with movements or activity and uh, may, may coexist with another. Usually subsides gradually within a day or as I told you, within four to 72 hours, sleep abolishes headache for majority of the patient. So this is natural re relieving factor. Sleep is natural relieving factor. Uh, Postrome, we talked about prodrome. Few days before patient is start experiencing, two to three days before patient is start experiencing symptoms, and again after the patient is uh, after the attack subsides, pain patient still feel fatigued, irritable, lethargic, and it, uh, he has reduced uh, uh, tolerance for food and decreased alertness. This may also last from few hours to a day. Then what are triggers of headache? Triggers are those factors which increase headache, which increase headache. All these conditions we have talked about, light, sounds, and odors. Then stress and anxiety 
um, food, say a certain foods which are, for example, milk and dairy products uh, and things like that, that increase the uh, headache. Then lack of sleep, oversleeping, hunger, female hormones, menstrual ketamineal headaches also occur uh, in close proximation with female uh, menstrual cycle. And sometimes there is ketamineal exacerbation, which means during periods the headache had increases or it occurs solely during during uh, uh, female cycle and then it is known as ketamineal headache. Then weather changes may also trigger it and uh, complications are rare but sometimes it may be associated with recurrent for example recurrent aura may be associated with persistent neurological deficits rarely it is associated with a stroke so how do you manage as we have talked about patient with recurrent headaches have a poor quality of life they miss their either their day of work or their day of study or the social functioning uh, so we must identify, first of all, we must identify triggers and avoid so that we can reduce the medicines. Uh, prevent analgesic abuse, pr provide appropriate preventive treatment and should avoid then anticipate and reduce adverse effect of pharmacotherapy. For example, sodium valproic acid is a commonly used prophylactic agent but cannot be given to women with childbearing age because of its high incidence of causing fetal malformation. So you have to anticipate and reduce the effects of pharmacotherapy side effects. Then provide appropriate consultation and referral, avoid physical and psychological sequelae of recurrent and chronic headaches. A person missing frequently uh, his uh, or her activities, routine activities may undergo physical and psychological stress. So journal, feature, journal uh, treatment is much, much more effective than considered. Usually people do not pay heed or, uh, to, these, uh, 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 to these measures, but they should be uh, regular exercise, sleep, improving sleeping habits, timely meals, avoid missing meal, restrict caffeinated, uh, and avoid triggers. Then uh, prophylaxis is offered to those patients who have more attacks in a month than two to three times. Prophylaxis is offered to those patients who have more than three or more attacks per month. They have marked interference with routine life. Then you advise, you advise them uh, prophylaxis. Uh, sodium valproic acid, you have, this is according to the uh, new guidelines 2018 these are the level these are these are migraine prophylactic drugs are they are if you look for evidence-based guidelines uh, pharmacological treatment for migraine you can find it on internet uh, for long, these are anti-epileptic drugs and they are but they are also effective for the prevention of migraine they're beta blockers this is a herb butter bulb and this uh, is a uh, drug uh, tryptans which is used for menstrually related migraines. Then uh, these are antidepressants, amitriptyline and venlafaxine. They are again used for migraine prophylaxis. So we have five, four or five categories where we have antidepressants uh, and uh, certain vitamins, riboflavin, and certain um, uh, herbal medicines, which may be used for the treatment of migraine. Potential type of headache are the commonest type of headache. We talk about headache is the commonest neurological symptoms among pain syndrome, headache. Among the headaches, tension type headache, headache is the commonest. Uh, uh, commonest headache. It may be episodic and chronic. You may find it in the um, you may uh, you may find the, uh, the diagnostic criteria uh, in various books. I'm talking about certain uh, important points like uh, it is considered normal headache. People usually call it normal headache. 
nothing is normal if it is a pain syndrome it is not normal but it is called, called as normal headache or ordinary headache because it is not as dramatic as migraine is however it may because it is constantly present it, it usually does not impair your activities you may continue to work with the headache but it cause a sort of background uh, uh, background decrease in quality of life Mm, and uh, should not is usually associated with depression, functional structure, cervical or musculoskeletal abnormalities, and it may be associated with poor posture. So there is uh, this headache tension type of headache criteria for the diagnosis, just like we talked about in migraine. Uh, number of episodes required, clinical features which are required. All this is available in. Uh, on the website I talked about later, if you have, if someone has missed, it is International Headache Society criteria for the diagnosis of migraine and available PDF document is downloadable and is, is, is available on internet. How do we manage treatment is aimed as at inducing prolonged remissions, reduce, reducing headache in intensity and increasing treatment and uh, improving quality of life. For episodic tension type headache, we usually do not, do not give treatment. We reassure the patient, uh, uh, tell them to maintain their postures, to maintain physical activity, to maintain, uh, to, uh, to uh, avail adequate sleep and all these general measures. And usually we do not episode, treat episodic tension because they are chronic tension type of headache because they are persistent and they cause, as I told you, sort of background impairment in quality of life. They should be, uh, uh, should, they should be treated and we can again treat them with, with physiotherapy and uh, there are certain, again, certain drugs, amitriptyline, like in uh, case of migraine and other SSRI because this is commonly associated with uh, commonly associated with uh, stress and anxiety and um, depression. Then uh, cluster headaches. Cluster headaches are called clusters because they occur in clusters. Two to eight attacks, recurrent headaches, regular occur regular for six to twelve weeks, months in a year or two. Usually, your patient report that uh, have patient uh, headache appears only when the when the spring starts, or they appear only when the winter starts, or they appear when the season changes. So they have a particular time of onset during the year. They do not continue to occur whole whole year, except for certain ten percent chronic cases. More commonly, they occur in clusters, and those clusters may be of two to eight attacks per day. And the one cluster la may last from six to 12 weeks, which is long. Then you have, uh, then uh, unlike in migraine, the here male to female ratio is male are five times more effective than female and usual age range is 12, 20 to 50. For migraines, we were talking about the usual age ranges it's teenagers, teenagers, they start in teenagers, but here they usually start after, after teenagers and they are more common in male. So uh, common presents include alcohol, lack of sleep and all those uh, things which are. Again, there is a diagnostic criteria. They have a strong unilateral orbital, supraorbital temporal pain. This, uh, this, uh, 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 diagnostic criteria again is as such as it is in the International Headache Society document and you can find it it is I mean the slide is uh, small difficult to read but since it has to be on the one slide you can find it on the um, you find it in that document of uh, headache classification and it is uh, more easily available on the internet so how do you treat uh, an acute attack of cluster headache. Patient, you, cluster headache again is very dramatic in the sense that it is associated, it is unilateral headache. 
and unilateral, periorbital, supraorbital, or temporal, lasting 15 to 180 minutes. We were talking about two to eight episodes of these headaches, two to eight episodes of these headaches if they are untreated. And they last, th those two, are, though two attacks or eight attacks may last up to 15 minutes or may last up to 180 minutes. Then uh, they are usually attacked there. And for this also, we require five attacks to make the diagnosis. Then uh, ipsilateral conjectile injection or lacrimation, nasal congestion, eyelid edema, uh, forehead and facial sweating, ipsilateral neosis or tosis. Attacks have a frequency from what, they, they, as, we, as we talked about, uh, every other day, they may occur daily. Then how do you treat it? avoid triggers and uh, specific measures include oxygen inhalation with 10% with 100% oxygen by and up to 7 to 10 liters for 15 minutes then you may use triptans like we use uh, in migraine and infradesal all those drugs which cause vasoconstriction can be used in this other opiates, NSAIDs, and combination generally have no role in the acute management. Here, usually, NSAIDs do not, uh, NSAIDs usually are not effective. We may use them in, as a first trial, but they are usually not effective. So, oxygen inhalation is the first measure that you do in the middle for, for, uh, for your patient who present to your emergency directory department with all the features of uh, autonomic symptoms, severe unilateral headache, multiple attacks a day, you, you first offer him oxygen inhalation, then triptans, and then prophylactic. Short-term prophylaxis are usually given, unlike in migraine, in migraine we usually give prophylaxis for two to three months minimum or up to two years maximum. But for uh, Cluster headaches are usually a short-term prophylaxis because they are occurring in clusters. They are occur occurring at specific time in our ear when they, uh, after which they subside. So if they, if we want to reduce the frequency or to abolish the headache, even during that cluster period, we can give these short-term prophylaxis for that period. Uh, Long-term again given with the same drugs but usually not advised and uh, this is it i think uh, if you want to uh, 